Hello and welcome back to JVCTR. For those of you that are new, my name is Johnny, uh, I run this channel and today I wanted to run you through the options available on the Mark 8 Fiesta ST so you can decide for yourself whether they are worth ticking or not. As the Fiesta ST now has more options than ever to choose from, I thought this video may help some of you who are thinking about buying one. I have an ST3 with most of the options ticked, so everything you see going forward is how it would be on an ST3. ST2s and ST1s may be slightly different. First up, cruise control. This is the same simple controls as the Mark 7 and they've now introduced a speed limiter. Unfortunately, it is missing the radar guarded cruise control as they've replaced the radar sensor with a front mounted intercooler. Although I think I know which one of those I would rather have. Next up, the flat bottom steering wheel, which in my opinion looks great. My only criticism is that all the buttons feel the same, so you can't feel your way to the right button and may need to take your eyes off the road. There is also the option to heat the wheel, which mainly heats the 10 to 2 hand position. However, the top of the wheel is not heated, so rude boys, you'll have to put up with cold hands. Keyless entry works well and they have removed the exterior button, which gives a much cleaner look. Uh, simply slide your hand behind the handle and the car opens. You do need to wait a moment longer than feels natural before opening the door, however. You can lock the car using this hidden button on the handle, which works well. Uh, and keyless start is as good as it's ever been, and so far has never failed to recognise the keys in the car. Next, the NCAP pack, or New Car Assessment Program pack. This includes a centre headrest, lane keeping alerts and guidance, seat belt notifications and auto on headlights. The most interesting option here is of course lane keeping, which can be turned on or off and does not reset with the ignition. As you can see here, the green lines on the dash mean that it's locked onto the road edges and will correct your steering if you wander out of your lane. This works well on the motorway, but if you're honing it with it turned on, it can sometimes feel like your passenger has grabbed your steering wheel and it can be a little unnerving. The seatbelt notifications are clear and work well, however they form one of the many menus that pop up when you start the car and it's just another menu you have to dismiss before you can put the car into sport mode, which is something I nearly always do. The auto on headlights work as you'd expect and there's absolutely no concerns here. If you opt for the LED headlights, although they are hard to film, you'll find that the light output is absolutely brilliant and the auto high beam function works well too. It raises and lowers the light gently, which is easier on your eyes, but can be overwritten using the stalk as normal. You can then raise and lower your high beams almost instantaneously, which is one of the advantages of using LED technology. You'll also get the dynamic indicators on the front, but not on the rear, which I don't really like, and the cornering lights have not been altered from the standard model. So unfortunately that means you'll get a very yellow cornering light next to a bright white LED headlight, which looks a bit odd. However, that's an easy fix with a bulb replacement, so that's something I'll be doing in the future. I mentioned the seats in my first impressions video and they are very comfy. The ST3 are half leather with white stitching and ST2 seats are cloth with blue stitching. Heated seats are an option and they are absolutely brilliant. The heating elements go all the way up your back and you now have three levels of heat intensity, however none of which are quite as furnace-like as the Mark 7s. The electronic temperature control works well with the air conditioning being much much colder than the Mark 7. A nice feature here that Ford has given to you is the option to limit the auto blowers, so you don't get into an either a really hot or really cold car and get blasted by the fans for 5-10 to 10 minutes. So if you have passengers you can still hold a conversation whilst the car is either cooling down or warming up, which is a nice touch. Sync 3 and B&O is one of the Mark 8's party pieces. It's far too complex to cover in detail here, but overall I am impressed. The screen is responsive, looks great, and the software isn't bad either. My only criticism is that a touchscreen can be hard to use in a car with firm suspension. It also features Apple CarPlay, which is really cool, but unfortunately you do need your phone plugged in to use it. CarPlay will mirror notifications from your phone, which means if you need fuel, you'll also get a notification on your phone, which is pretty cool. The B&O system sounds great and you get this ginormous sub in the boot. However, that does mean that if you want a decent sound system, you can't have a spare wheel, which may be a deal breaker for some of you. Next up, security. Now, I understand this isn't an option per se, but it's kind of worth mentioning in the video anyway. So the Mark 7, as I'm pretty sure anyone watching this video will know, was very susceptible to being stolen because of the location of the OBD port and the fact that the OBD port was open. Now the Mark 8, Ford have kind of acknowledged that this was an issue. Uh, they've moved the OBD port to a slightly less precarious position, but unfortunately it is still open due to EU regs, they can't do anything about that. Um, which means these cars are still susceptible to being stolen in the same way that the Mark 7 was which is unfortunate and they are already being stolen. So 
Although it's not an option, I guess you could class it as a mod. I would highly, highly recommend investing in one of these bad boys, a disc lock. It's not pretty, but it means that pretty much your car will definitely still be there when you get back. The folding mirrors work great and open and close as you lock and unlock the car. They're also heated and will contain the blind spot assistant feature or bliss if you've ticked that option too. This works really well with a flashing LED if you are indicating or just a static LED if you are passing another vehicle without indicating. I wasn't sure about this feature when ordering but I'm glad I ticked the box because it's actually really useful. The traffic sign recognition system works far better than I was expecting and even picks up speed limit changes in roadworks. It's a little unclear in this clip, but you can just about see the speed limit change on the dash as I go through the signs. If you opt for an SD3, you'll get the larger wheels and the red brake calipers. This is what they look like, but performance is no different. Now, the panel roof, which is one of my favorite features. It can slide all the way back, as you see here, or you can raise just the rear of the front half. The rear half doesn't open at all, and you have sunshades on both front and back. Although the back shade can be a little bit difficult to close if you aren't sat in the back of the car. Door protectors are pretty cool and have already saved my bacon. They do make a bit of noise when opening and closing the door which was unnerving initially but now I understand what the noise is, it's all good. It's quite a cool design with a simple push rod being the activator. And lastly just worth mentioning that the heel hold assist on the Mark 8 Fiesta ST is vastly improved over the Mark 7. So the heel hold assist on the Mark 7 I think a lot of people turned it off because you kind of had to like break it to get away you had to like rev a bit extra and then the car would lurch and it was all a bit uncomfortable um, however the hill hold assist on the mark 8 which is obviously kind of hard to film is much better um, you realize it's on obviously when you're on a hill it holds nicely um, but when you pull away there is there's no lurch you don't have to drive any differently unless you were doing a normal hill start um, and with that that is pretty much all the options you can get on the mark 8 fiesta st um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. There'll be plenty more videos on the Mark 8. Um, I'll continue to do mods and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, exciting stuff ahead. So I'll see you in the next one.